Guys, before we get started, please, please, please like and subscribe. It would really, really help us out. Welcome, guys, to another episode of the Monarchy Podcast. Today, we have Millie Varela. She's the uh, marketing director and business developer at Black Diamond Housing Services. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Well, welcome. Thank oh, you. wait, I need to make a quick announcement. Uh-huh. Uh, I have uh, Yuli back. She's been missing out on uh, a few of these lately. Yeah, this is my first one this year. <laughs> yes. Thank you for being here. I feel honored to be back. <laughs> Thank you. 2021. <laughs> uh, Millie, tell us a little bit about, first, what is Black Diamond Housing? Okay, so Black Diamond Housing Services provides temporary housing solutions to homeowners. Um, that have experienced any kind of damage from minor to something that's um, sudden and accidental, such as this fire or catastrophic event. Um, what we do is we bridge the financial gap between the insured and the insurance carrier. Um, we go through coverage D, which is additional living expense, and that's an incurred cost. So what we do is we incurred all the related um, expenses to the relocation for the homeowner. But in addition to that, we are an added value to a company like yours, where it's a full service from start to finish. You represent the client, um, but we also partner up with you guys and are able to provide temporary housing and help the client in a whole. Um, so that's that's what we do. Uh, we've been in business for quite some time, and we have a lot of resources from hotels to Airbnbs, uh, RVs, and we service nationwide. That sounds like it's a very valuable service that you guys offer and up until i mean recently when i heard about you guys i didn't i didn't even know it existed so yeah neither did i i hadn't met a company like uh black diamond yet we met salt well i did i met salt not too, a little bit ago mm-hmm. um can you tell us a little bit about how this idea came about if you know yes, uh, yes, have, yes. wait uh sorry to interrupt okay. have you been with a company from inception yes okay yeah so i've been with them for um three years and when we started out with black diamond housing we've been at black diamond funding is personal injury and we do and we've been in business for 11 years and we do personal injury advances but because of all the relationships that we've built throughout the years, we ran into um, one of his really good friends who is a first party attorney. And so it's a funny story because he come, he calls the guys one day, he calls Salt and Keston, and he says, well, listen, I have a claim and the client needs temporary housing, ALE. And we're like, we don't deal with any of that. Like, we don't know how that works. He's like, trust me. I mean, they're childhood friends. So he's like, okay. Tell me how much you need and here I'll send you a check. So he comes back, I believe three months later, hands delivers the check with the, with our fee and salt is like, light bulb went off. He's like, what is this? (laughs) How can I do this over and over again? (laughs) He grabs him by, by his arm and he's like, sit in my conference room. We need to talk about what just happened. Coming from the personal injury space. I mean, we get paid a year or two later. So our, so we're a financial firm, so our money is out for quite some time. Coming back three months later and giving us the money back plus, you know, our fee, we're like, what? So that's where it all started. Um, and basically, we have an in-house counsel. And before we even hired our independent adjusters, it was just us. Like, it was a, a group of, of five, and we're like, okay, well, let's do all of our due diligence. Let's find housing. Let's get this team going. We then hire um, Christiane, which is our IA, and I mean, she taught us a lot. She opened up our eyes to, you know, what the industry is, right, on the other side, and was able to be a added value to our company. And so with all said and done, about approximately a year of just preparation and being able to have the logistics down so that when we go out there like we did in Louisiana um, back in August – were able to, you know, help and assist clients by the hundreds, right? And not have to worry about we're running out of um, housing, we're running out of RVs. So we've created a really solid team that um, from start to finish, from the moment the call comes in to the moment that the 
client is placed in whichever option they're given. There's just constant communication, transparency, and most importantly, if we're working with a restoration company, with adjusters like yourselves, everybody involved in that claim is aware of how and where it stands. Okay. Awesome. Let's break it down a little bit for mm -hmm. viewers and people and let's explain what ALE is yes. so people know what would be considered additional living expense. So additional living expense is usually coverage D, sometimes C. Um, it's usually 10% of your policy and it's allocated for temporary housing solutions. Um, also expenses such as food, dry cleaners, pet care, anything that has to do with you having to move out from your home um, and it has to be incurred. And, I, and yeah, I want to be specific. It has to be uh, necessary as a result right. of you incurring or having some sort of a loss to, to your property. That's and, covered. Yes. And yeah. it not being livable. Mm -hmm. At that point, then ALE would be triggered. Yeah. Correct. So if your home becomes uninhabitable, whether that you don't have access to your kitchen or bathrooms or there's mold present um, to something more significant like a catastrophic storm, um, hurricanes, tornadoes, right. whatever it may be. Yeah. You no longer have that livable situation that you do day to day. So what we do is we, while you're dealing with the claim, we place that family into a like kind and quality home um, or whatever it is that, that's yeah. accessible in that area. And we give them kind of that peace of mind to say, okay, I have somewhere to rest my head tonight um, and it's safe. What if the house suffered a, a loss mm -hmm. and it's livable, but there's somebody in the property that has asthma or, you know, they, they just can't stay or some there. Sort of disability or something that impedes them from, you know, being at home. Absolutely. So in a situation like that, it's a no brainer. I mean, there's no argument at all. And we would essentially, you know, find them a temporary house because it's not about, it doesn't have to be a whole, like if one person can't live in that home, then that home becomes uninhabitable. Right. And then there's also um, situations where the whole the home is habitable, but they don't have like a kitchen. So they're no longer able to cook meals at home and they have to be eating out and they incur expenses. Something like that would be covered under um, ALE as well. Correct. Um, yeah, okay. correct. Um, so in a situation where a client does not want to move out of their home because, you know, it's just one portion of the house that is it's not habitable, then they're incurring costs, whether like you said, eating out you know, or having to drive somewhere to pick up their kids, whatever mm -hmm. it may be. Something that t changes your life from your day to day, and now you're incurring additional expenses. If you have receipts that can prove that, bank statements, and you provide it to us, then we can reimburse you mm -hmm. for those expenses. And again, just to reiterate, as a result of a uh, cover loss to their home. Correct. Not just renovations or, no. yes. <laughs> or something like that. Okay. Correct. And then there's also a possibility, uh, we've spoken about, parking an RV in their home. So mm -hmm. they don't have to leave their property, but now they have um, access to whatever uh, rooms in the home. They don't have like the bathroom or kitchen or. Correct. So, uh, and it depends on where you live too, because if your homeowners association doesn't allow an RV, then we can't deliver an RV. Okay. But if you live in an open community where you can go ahead and, and um, plug in an RV to, to your home, then we're able to do that. We did that a lot of that in Louisiana. Um, I think it's also a cultural thing, depending on, you know, where you're going, where you're assisting. Some prefer an RV, others prefer a house, um, but we're able to to deliver RVs and, and plug them in. And we take care of from start to finish, from the moment we drop it, in, drop, drop it off to when we pick it up and they get serviced and everything. So and if I have a, a three bedroom home, would I be able to rent a seven bedroom mansion <laughs> <laughs> no unfortunately we we can't because we what we look for is like kind and quality that's what the policy states um as long as you know you have a four bedroom you go to a four bedroom if you have a pool we'll find you a pool um this is not a vacation this is okay. something temporarily obviously comfortable we're not going to put you in a neighborhood that has nothing that has no comparison to where you live um or a city Again, you have to keep in mind if it's high season, if it's a catastrophic storm, a 10 mile radius is likely to be um, damaged, right? So then you would have to move a little further. Um, but we also have the ability that let's say you have family, all South Florida was affected and you have family up in Georgia. 
and you want to go and live with your family up in Georgia until your home is restored, then we're able to um, give you, you know, a certain amount of, of money and then you kind of figure out your own housing situation. Okay. Are there other companies like Black Diamond? There are. Um, not in Florida. I think they're in Chicago, if I'm not mistaken. But they're more, they're tailored more to the insurance carrier as a preferred vendor. So when we came into this space, we realized that there's not a lot defending the client, right? So just like yourselves, you know, I'm sure that you guys have experience working with the insurance carrier. You see a lot of things that you know aren't necessarily right, right, for the insured. Fair. So, unfair. <laughs> unfair, yes. So we wanted to say, you know what, even if we get the opportunity to work with an insurance carrier, we essentially become, you know, their puppet, right? And yes, we'll send you, we'll keep you booked and busy, but at what cost? And are we really truly doing right by the client? And so that's what we're passionate about. Same thing with the personal injury space of why we came into personal injuries because these insureds go through situations where they didn't ask for, right? And time after time, you're paying your homeowner's insurance. And it's not fair that when you do need the help, they give it to you, but half, right? right like they give you the, change. yeah, right. exactly. So we want to be able, if you have 30,000, let's say allocated to additional living expense coverage, we're not afraid to put that kind of money out, you know, because that's, you're entitled to that. We want to give you what you're entitled to. Right. Nothing more, nothing less. Yeah. Just what they exactly. deserve. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. And since you guys opened up, how has uh, business been? It's been great. Um, to be honest with you, with and I keep going back to Louisiana because it's recent um, and it's also a very new venture of ours. When we started out, we started out in, in South Florida and then made our way up throughout Florida. Um, but we never did it at Cat. Uh, we've never had any any catastrophic event um, experience. So it was kind of just like create it and run with it. And so I, I created, like we, like we told you earlier, like the tent and I flew to Louisiana and just hired, I also hired locals too. Um, Cause there's nothing better than, you know, kind of coming together with the community and we were slammed busy. Um, there was so much catastrophic damages, which, I know, I know you guys were out there and it, it was like a fulfilling experience to be able to, in such a catastrophic event, being able to be that hand, you know, like whenever they were like, what temporary housing, like people were living in tents. It, it was really compelling. So aside from this being a business and obviously we're, you, you, you make money out of a business, but it's, it's about the compassion and, and being able to help somebody who is helpless um, but no, we've been, we've been very busy. Um, Louisiana is slowing down and now Florida is starting to pick up. So we're, we're very grateful for it. Yeah. And sorry, fun fact. We met when I was in, uh, Pensacola for mm -hmm. Sally and you were in Louisiana at the time. Mm -hmm. We missed each other because she was coming the next week to Pensacola and that's how we connected. And yes, here we are today. Gotcha. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, those and catastrophes brought us together. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we share the philosophy of, of. Uh, taking care of the client and putting the client first mm -hmm. and by that becoming successful. Right. Uh, a lot of people get that backwards. You mm -hmm. know, they think they put themselves first, they put the money first and then they forget that, no, you're working for somebody. You do really good, a really good job. They're going to recommend you. And then that's how you, you grow. You know what so, my saying is? What is Purpose it? Purpose before profit. And then the profit I comes. I like it. I actually have a, a side business that uh, has to do with abbreviations. It's it's unrelated to this, <laughs> but uh, I might put that on a. So on it's a, purpose yeah. before <laughs> profit, PVP mm -hmm. or yeah, peanut perfect. butter or something. Thank you for that. <laughs> it's a million. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now that th because th this is something new, and I fear, I fear no, <clears throat> I think that uh, inevitably you guys are gonna, going to have people trying to do the same thing that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Does that, does that worry you? Not at all. Competition is necessary. In order to have, when you have competition, it means that you're doing something right. And essentially, if someone's marketing, they're also marketing you, right? Because you guys are in the same space. 
So it, I don't ever see competition as a threat. If anything, it's it's better. It's it's conducive for business. If you don't have competition, then you're not doing something that great, right? Um, I personally think that there could be five different candy stores. But if you go back to the same candy store because of the quality, because of the service, because they've done right by you and people you know, you'll always have their business. So competition doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't instill any, any fear in us. It's good for us. Yeah. Yeah. No. And another thing is that, and it, it goes back to what I was saying before, it's really difficult to find companies that, that have all those qualities all together, you know, service, um, you know, good product or just everything that makes you a really good company. Everybody can try it, but it doesn't mean that everybody else is going to be successful. Absolutely. So, and everybody uh, can preach it, but doesn't mean everybody can practice it. Mm-hmm. So. Correct. No, and, yeah. and in a way, I, I cherish that, the fact that people, you know, have the opportunity to try things and, and do businesses. But mm-hmm. fact of the matter is a lot, a lot of people try, but not a lot of people can, can accomplish it. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm glad. You, I mean, I feel the same way. I, I'm not, I'm not, I mean, competitors, nobody's, we're operating at a completely different plane of, of service. Right. So we really, I feel like we don't have competitors. Yes, we do have people that uh, pra- do the same thing that we do, but mm-hmm. not like we do it. Exactly. So in essence, we're, you know, different levels. There's levels to this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, please blip that, bleep that. <laughs> or not, you know, do whatever you want. Um, so, yeah, there could be other companies that do what we do, but not how we do it. Exactly. exactly. And so. the same as for you. Absolutely. So, Millie, what does, what does your, what does it cost the policyholder to hire your company? Zero. So, what we do is, this is a non-recourse um, lending. So, we incur all the cost and pretty much... What, how we verify that there is coverage and that we're able to recover the money that we put out is making sure that the client has the additional living expense coverage. Once that happens, we invoice the carrier and then it's just the carrier and Black Diamond Housing. Um, if the carrier decides not to pay us or deny the claim, that's a loss that we are willing to take. Um, we're big boys and girls and, and you know this is part of business. So if for whatever reason the insurance carrier does not pay, then we try to, you know, go after the insurance carrier, but we never, ever go back to the policyholder at all. Okay. So there's no risk for the, for the home Zero. hiring company. Mm-hmm. Okay. Correct. That's great. That's good to have that peace of mind. Yeah. Uh, because, I mean, you're, in essence, you're getting something and you know that you're never going to have to pay a po- out of pocket for it. So Absolutely. And uh, it's in the agreement that they sign clearly states that, you know, they are not held responsible for any of the incurred costs. Yeah. And you guys have an opportunity to review the claim before you decide to yeah. um, have a client sign your contract. So I'm sure the client is trusting that you're doing, you know, mm-hmm. your due diligence and investigating and making sure that if you take on the claim, you're taking on all the Absolutely. risk as well. And what yeah. I tell a lot of the clients, because sometimes they're like, well, we're not sure if we want to utilize your service, because again, it's about ed- educating the client. They're not sure this is something that is new to them. We tell them, Give us the opportunity. We'll tell you what kind of like housing options based on your coverage and you decide, you know, I mean, like even if they do sign our agreement, I tell them you're not this is not like a we're not married forever. If you decide that you don't want to move forward, we haven't released any funds. We can back out and we void out the agreement. No problem. Um, so they're not tied to it. If we have not released any funds, if we haven't delivered any RVs, if we haven't sent them anything, then they can walk away and. Everybody goes along. Okay. That's great. Yep. And that tells you the type of company you're doing business with, that they're being transparent and they're not, you know, yeah. hiding anything in their contract or anything. So right. that, that's great. Yeah. I want to make sure the viewers understand that this is something that your policy typically provides coverage for. Okay. Uh, you don't have to live in a property with damages and with fans drying out your house or where mold remediation is being conducted. You do not have to stay there even if the property is considered livable because maybe the kitchen was unaffected or the bathroom was unaffected, you do not have to stay there mm-hmm. if there's any uh, sort of construction or, uh, or uh, health hazards or allergies that you, you may have. You do not have to stay there, and then you, you can call 
uh, Millie with Black Diamond Housing, and she, they can help you get reallocated for you know whatever amount of time you need to be out. Right. And I think another part of it is when the insurance adjuster comes out and assesses the damage, obviously they're going to always minimize it, right? And they're always going to put no, fear. Really? Don't say that. What are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, we they wouldn't would we, never. Listen, we would not have a job <laughs> otherwise. So keep keep doing it. Keep doing it. Yeah. No, but um, so they put fear in them and they're like, you know, as I'm sure you guys run into, oh, my my um insurance, homeowner's insurance is going to go up. I don't want to tap into too many coverages. Allow us, even if the IA says this is not covered, ALE does not apply, don't fear. Like, do not fear them. Like, And you, sorry, just to clarify, IA is the independent adjuster sorry. or the field adjuster for the insurance company. Correct. Not your PA. No, not your PA. <laughs> Thank don't you. Don't fear. Black Diamond is here. <laughs> Uh, like Black that. Diamond and Monarch are here. <laughs> are here. Exactly. True, true. <laughs> um, so allow us to do what we do best and being able to to give you what you're entitled to. Yeah. People have to realize that they pay for this service, for these coverages. You know, don't be afraid to use But do they? Huh? But do they? What do you mean? Do they pay for these for these coverages? That Oh. Yeah. Well, and yes. That's the I mean, next thing. That's yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, if you were, you're properly insured, then yes, right. you are paying yeah. for these coverages. There's a small, not, not a small, but there's a possibility that you're paying for insurance and you don't have the proper coverages. And that's why you should call us to get a free policy review. So, you know, slip yeah. that in there real quick. <laughs> um, um, but assuming that you are paying for insurance and that you do have proper coverage, you are paying for this service. Mm -hmm. Nobody, you're not doing anybody a favor and the insurance company is not doing you a favor. They owe you, you know, these services or these coverages. So that you pay for it year oh, yeah. after so year. You shouldn't have to inconvenience right. yourself for weeks or months um, for something that you're entitled to. Mm -hmm. so. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean. And you're not going to get a discount on your premium for not tapping. No. Into these because coverages. Sally down the street filed the claim and now the entire neighborhood. Yeah. Exactly. Insurance claim. You're bringing up really good points. Yeah. So, Maybe we should switch seats and <laughs> <laughs> taking over now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. sorry, that just takes us into uh, educating again. You know, the consumers and the policyholders into knowing their coverages and making sure they have not just they have the coverage, but the right amounts. Because what good is it if you have like, you know, not enough ALE coverage or not enough, you know, coverages in general and any of the categories if you didn't properly assess like, you know, your contents or you mm -hmm. know your needs. What about if you? can't afford, you know, even your coverage won't allow you to be out of the house for the time that you need to be. Wait, is that clear? Was that too mangled? No. Yeah. If you have, if you don't have sufficient <laughs> coverage and then yeah. instead of needing, uh, being able to be out for the six months that the project is going to take or the, the repairs, you can only stay out for a month yeah. because yeah. you yeah. don't have enough. It's not a clear yes or no. I have the coverage. It's yes, I have it. But also do I have enough uh, that would put me and my family somewhere for the amount Correct. of time that I would need? Yeah. yeah. So that's, like you said, it's determined on, on the coverage and, and how much they have available. Unfortunately, we could do so much, right? Um, if you have a limited policy and ALE can only be utilized for a month, then that's as much as we can do. We're not a charity, you know, at the end of the day, so we can't put out more money that we don't have available to work with. But what we could promise you is that we would work with you guys and making sure that we have you know, open communication and, and validating that if the repair is going to take three weeks, we have enough budget just in case if you need an additional two. So we'll always budget out to benefit the client, but also you guys as, you know, representatives of them. Um, we don't like to leave a client and say, I'm sorry, your time is coming to a close, to an end, <laughs> right? Yeah. And you got to move, pack your stuff and go. That's not the type of business that we run. We want to be able to help them throughout the process as long as the coverage is available. And so that takes me to my next point, which is this is not a vacation. So like you mentioned earlier, you can't, if you're living, I don't know, towards the West, you're not going to get a condo on the beach because that's more money. What do you mean? Like, <laughs> really? Listen, I would love to too, but <laughs> life is not fair. Okay. No, um, but you, you can't, we're very 
specific on the budgeting. So even though a client sees that they have $20,000, they just see the $20,000. They don't see fees, utilities, plus, you know, expenses um, for them to go and, and buy food and kind of get their their life back on track. They don't see all of that. So keep in mind, when we're budgeting, we're budgeting all of those points, housing, um, utilities, all inclusive, and petty cash. And it's not like we only give it to you once. If your coverage allows it, we'll give you, you know, an allowance every month until your house is restored. And they don't see that, sorry, until they incur it. Exactly. But that's why you guys have already planned all this out for them. Correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I wanted to make emphasis on on that, that <clears throat> this is as incurred also, mm-hmm. right? It's not just that you guys are, well, you do provide an allowance, right? Yes. An initial allowance. I'm not going to say, well, whatever the amount is. Yeah. But that allows a client to, you know, make their initial uh, expenses as far as food, yeah. you know, whatever arrangements. They Even may travel need. we discussed, right? If they have yes. to travel additional distances to the new Correct. home that they're staying in. Mm-hmm. But I, wanna, I want to point out that this is not something that your insurance company will do. They're not gonna, going to give you an advance, you know, for you to have that, that money in hand. If you were to handle this on your own, you would have to incur the expense and then submit the documentation to the insurance company, fight them for a little bit. Try. And then, yeah, <laughs> and then get it back. Yes. Yeah. So we, you, you avoid all of this by using... Yeah, and we've run into situations where clients get, let's say, 3000 And I'm going to go... I'm going back to the $20,000, let us say. Right? They have 20000 and all that the insurance carrier said is, you know what? We're giving you two or $3,000 max. Excuse me. I'm entitled to that entire mm-hmm. twenty if I need it. Obviously, you're not going out partying over the weekend and then send them uh, a nightclub receipt. No, it's, well, Edgar, don't get ideas. (laughs) (laughs) Well, if you live on the beach. (laughs) Um, But they're not going to do right by you by any means. You know, they'll kind of give you some cash to kind of keep you calm and shut you up. But Black Diamond Housing will incur, again, whatever it is that you need. Of that entire yeah. policy, uh, entire coverage. They do ultimately have to give it to you, but if you're navigating the process on your own, they're going to make it very difficult for you. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, I have a, a client that called me on this, which, by the way, this client opted to to handle the ALE portion all by herself so mm-hmm. that I wouldn't charge her my percentage on it, mm-hmm. which I'm okay with because, you know, yeah. I know it's a pain in the ass, and ultimately she wanted to do it on her own, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is an IRMA claim that settled... 2018 and she called me two weeks ago to tell me that she had still not been able to recover the entire uh ale portion that she that that she needed and um she had already incurred all these expenses but the uh, examiner was asking her for a lease agreement from the place that she rented the property two years ago yeah (laughs) but lease agreement or not you've the, the expenses are incurred. Yes. Yeah, you're either out that money. Some people may get into like credit card debt paying interest. And mm-hmm. when they pay you a year, two years later, they're not going to pay you with interest. Yeah. yeah. You know, so you might as well have invested your money somewhere else. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So again, and the more we talk about this, the more value I see in it. Mm-hmm. So I do want to make a push to to have more of my clients reach out to you guys. Thank you. Um, but this is, I think it's a great service and a great thing that you guys are doing. Thank you. So, Thank you. Yeah. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, there's so many moving parts to a claim and it's good to be able to have somebody for each coverage, you know, someone you can truly trust and that they're going to deliver at the level that you guys are are servicing your clients. So what we can promise is all we have is our reputation at the end of the day. And that's how we've made it through so many years. And we'll continue to do right by the client, obviously, because they deserve it, but essentially because that's all we have, right? Our reputation is everything. We're not here being unfair or tricking p- people. Like you use our service because you truly believe in us. And I mean, on another note, we've turned down clients who don't believe in our service because we know that we're in this for the long haul, right? Like we're not going to serve it to you and then cut you off because you're just too complicated. If we said and we gave you our word that we will house you until the end, it's a, that's a long journey sometimes. Yeah. So if you don't believe in our service, then 
it's okay. There are other services that you can utilize, other companies, because at the end of the day, we're passionate about what we do. And we want you to be just as passionate and believe that we will do right by you. Question. Answer. Outside of uh, <laughs> the direction that we were going into. In, uh, did you go to school for marketing? I did. Okay. And how did you join the funding part first? Or how long have you been part of that? How did you end up at a black? Are you related to Sal? No. No? Okay. No, but I could probably be at this point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so I was a flight attendant. Um, yeah, interesting. interesting. <laughs> yeah, I did it for three years and I was based in California. I love the West Coast, but oh my God, it was so expensive. <laughs> I can't be here. And my mom was here in Florida. So I moved back. I did flight attending for a little bit, opened up a restaurant um, with a partner, then walked away from my portion because that was a hot mess central. <laughs> and then through that transition, I Keston, which is one of the partners, I, I knew Keston and Keston's like, hey, we're looking for an admin. And I was like, whatever. I, I have no idea because back then it was just strictly personal injury. Um, but I'm like, whatever, I'll learn. You know, if I if I was able to manage a, a restaurant and do whatever, like, you know, uh, I'll, I can do this too. So I went in and it felt, you know, when you walk into a job and you're like, this is it. Like, that's how it was. I was like, this feels like so like family oriented and I have no idea what litigation and deposition is, but I will learn it. Like I had zero experience and I came in and then I think it was like three months and they were like, hey, we fired our marketer. We're promoting you. And I was like, you know, you for a promotion, you have to agree. <laughs> like <laughs> it was like, you don't have a choice, yeah. but you do, but you yeah. really don't. And so I started during one of the busiest months um, and personal injury, like all the events. And I remember my very first um, week as a marketing director, like you have to go to Orlando by yourself and set up at this like huge convention. And I was like, okay. <laughs> was this your first marketing job? Yes. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I did a little bit of marketing for a dental um, uh, office that I used to work at, but this was like full force marketing. Mm -hmm. um, and there was like a whole department handed to me and I was like, uh, it, it's kind of like I posted on LinkedIn um, a couple of weeks ago and I was like, when somebody hands you an opportunity, don't say that you can't do it. Just figure it out along the way. And that's literally like what I did. Just kind of figure it out. And I was like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. Oh, I had no idea. Like there's like, I'm like screaming inside. I'm like, I know what I'm doing. Oh, it's the best way to learn. Yeah. And it seems like yeah. you're doing a great job. So thank you. Yeah. Um, but that's how, that's how it happened. And then three years later, I'm, I'm here and I'm happy and salt with another of when I like I told you earlier like he goes hunting or fishing and then he comes back with like an extraordinary idea and he's like by the way black diamond housing it's your project that's your baby develop it and I was like I don't even know like what drywall is like what am I supposed <laughs> to do like mold like I've never experienced are we gonna and have to send you like on a hunting trip or fishing do you do any of those things I've never heard you. What Salt does on hunting trips, I do every night in the shower. <laughs> uh, we've, we've spoken about this. And, and, uh, the, oh, the, thinking. The, Sorry. I was like, oh, wait, what are we talking about? I don't know. Wait, I was like, wait, I don't even know. About? Wait, because maybe I'm confused. <laughs> I was like, maybe he kills deer and birds in his shower. I don't know. Um, no. <laughs> What <laughs> you okay, said? Maybe, you do right. in your shower what Sal does in the hunt? Like the hunting about trip. The I don't know what he does in a hunting trip. Oh, Think thinking. thinking, thinking, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we're gonna have to so send you. I got it right. You, my uncle lives in Georgia. You can, you wanna go? Do hunting? you hunt? No, I, I don't. Fish. I, well, we do hunt. We all hunt here. Oh, claims. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I've been. I've uh, fished. Fished. Yeah. Gone fishing. Yeah. Gone fishing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Caught. I don't, know. I don't know. Maybe like two, three times in my life, and I don't like to touch the, the fish. <laughs> Like I'll catch, catch it, and somebody else, too. somebody else has to come and take the fish off. And the bait and all of that. Yeah. Oh, don't give me that. Well, the bait. I mean, yeah. I gotta, well, essentially, you're you're touching a fish. Yeah, but it's not alive. Like when it shakes in your hand, <laughs> it's a little weird. <laughs> Sorry, this is totally off topic, but anyway. <laughs> the few, the one time that I caught the the fish was I had to like grab a towel and like you know yeah, and press really tight. <laughs> 
All right. Uh, so you took Black Diamond Housing Services and ran with it. Yeah. Okay. And that's. Yeah. And you've the, developed all this exactly. pretty much on your own. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Well, not on my own. I mean, the whole logistics and everything else that's the back end, which is the most important part. I can go out there and bring claims, but it's about like what happens once it comes in. And it's just like an, a well machine. Right. And my team is phenomenal. Like extraordinary i call them like whenever i went to louisiana they, they got hit with like 100 claims in a week and they were like what do we do and they were like we don't want you to slow down but yes take it easy <laughs> on us you know and it's just like when we're on we're till the end and i have a phenomenal team that i can count on and i know that i can go out market and build the business and know that once it hits the door they're taken care of and i don't have to worry about it you know, they actually come to me and they're like, hey, remember the claims? And they give me like a status update. We have all an internal service um, that notifies me all the time, like where it stands. Because I, what I like to do is know where my clients are, right? If you call me and you're like, Mrs. Daisy, how is she? Like, and I have all the notes and I know. I'm not your typical marketer. It's like, okay, I bring it in the door and then I don't care what happens after that as long as you guys take care of it. Like, I am on top of my claims. I'm making sure that the clients are taken care of. And for me, from a marketing standpoint, is communication is key. So if I get a call on a status update, I know that the girls are on top of it, you know, or have tried to reach out, but the client is unresponsive. So it's just about the internal process that makes me look good. It's not so much like what I do, but how they handle it after it comes in. Okay. And I know as far as like, values and all that like monarch and and uh, black diamond housing are very aligned in our values and our system yeah the way we operate yeah i I heard we had this conversation with with salt when he was here but i want to hear from your perspective how did you achieve that you know team um synergy (sighs) okay so we're mainly women and you know what they say, like <laughs> women are like hardcore. So everything we do, it's it has to be all or nothing, right? We we leave like nothing on the table. So we have very strong personalities in the office. And at first, I'm going to be honest, like there was a lot of friction because you have like alpha females who like want to run the world and it's like it's my way or the highway. But essentially you you break each other, right? And then you mold and you understand that we each have a virtue, like virtues, and what we don't, what are what are our weaknesses, we work on. Like every Monday, our um, housing director, our inside counsel, and myself, we meet, and we're like, what did we do great and what could we do better? And then we coach each other through through the process. Like what are the difficulties? How can we make that process better? Our in-house counsel has like made a process for everything from I don't know like the minute that the call comes in to how you close out a file there's like she created an employee handbook so if you have a question she'd be like don't waste my time read the book (laughs) you know um but it's about building on each other's strength and instead of criticizing and saying well why'd you do that it's how can we do it better and since like the core group has that mentality, we've kind of just expanded that out with everybody else that we've hired afterwards. That was beautifully put the way you explained that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks. Um, we call ours huddles and staff and PA meetings. Yeah, and I'm know, here thinking, how can like, we make? I have better? so much more like more organizing to do (laughs) we can always learn from each other and that's part of growing and it's just learning from others i agree 100 percent. and i think it's yes your track record your resume is great but if you don't have the mentality or the personality then all of that means nothing right like we've like salt said we fired a lot of people great i mean we hired people with three degrees but zero common sense. And it's like. And that's the hardest. We always talk yeah. about this. It's the hardest like 
quality to find in a good candidate is common sense. And it's the one that you can't really see in an interview. You can't put on a resume. You can't put, I have great common mm-hmm. sense. No, we have probing <laughs> questions to try to, you know, yeah. see if we could get something, but you, you don't know until you try that. You person, don't. So. You don't. And I think that has been the hardest thing, but it's like after you have so many winners, the person that's sitting on the other side of the table when you're interviewing, they can tell, right? So it kind of just filters, they filter them, themselves out. And I've had, I've had people that are like, you know, this is a great job, but I don't think it's for me. Yeah. <laughs> and so now we kind of break it down where it's like not so many people in an interview and we're like intimidating them. Yeah. I, I no longer am part of interviews because I'm, I'm all about like your energy, right? Like As I had, I. huh? As am I. It's, it's true though, because you can say all the right things. I can memorize this whole thing and answer it, right? But it's about how comfortable do you feel? How, what is your energy? And the same energy you have today, you'll have tomorrow and the next day and the next day, right? Um, and I think we've protected that culture and that like caringness in our office that we're very particular on who we hire. Like if you don't have that mentality, if you don't have that drive and you don't have that compassion, then we're not willing to jeopardize what we what we strongly built for it, right? Yeah. So and then waste your time and your resources training someone and then figuring out they're not the right person. Yeah. Or yeah. And then you find the good one. You're like, yes, I found yeah. a good one. Yeah. No, I need another one and another one. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's are, you, true. are you guys hire, currently hiring? We're always hiring. We just hired a new IA, which we're very excited about. Um I'm in the process of building my team because I'm only one person and so it's like we need a cloning machine. And I'm like, that's not happening. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like, I think you got used to me delivering too much. And now you just want to, you know, squeeze the last <laughs> bit of me. Um, no, but we like, honestly, we're a big family. And um, yes, we're constantly hiring. I want to grow like a huge sales team throughout Florida. And now we, how we spoke earlier about Georgia. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, we want winners. So if you know a winner that you're willing to pass on. <laughs> We're over. looking for no, winners. <laughs> well, we'll interchange. I, I knew, I know a few, but they, they're, they've already worked with me. So I need, you know, that's why we work together. <laughs> right. We make each other better. Exactly. Uh, okay. So I want to do to wrap it up, unless you have no, no. anything else, is there something that you want to tell the consumers that, you know, like the last, uh, I say the same thing that you Lee said earlier, educate yourself in the policy like what are your coverages and what you're entitled to and if you don't know reach out to monarch please. allow yourself yes. to be educated yes <laughs> ab- absolutely i think that we try to save money on car insurance homeowners insurance but then we don't realize the kind of damage that it does long term so that a hundred dollars two hundred dollars that you may save on your policy could really affect um when you truly need or file a claim or you don't have ALE because you decided to pay less and now it affects that additional living expense coverage. Um, but everything else, I mean, we're here. If you have a claim and, and you're not sure if you can move out, you don't know if you have the coverage, obviously you, you, you need to find somebody to represent you. So hire you guys, but when you need to move out or, you don't know where to go or what to do. Um, Black Diamond Housing is here to to assist. Excellent, excellent. Uh, okay, Millie, let's do this uh, little segment that we like to call Rapid Fire. So, okay. we, so us and the viewers get to know you a little bit. Okay. On the personal side. Okay. Perfect. All right. Uh, favorite hobby. Pilates. Oh, nice. That's what? a workout in a sense, right? Yeah, yeah it's a- but it's a hobby. <laughs> mm. I like, hate working out. <laughs> I mean, I do it, but like, it, it's... no. Have you tried Pilates? Uh, for recovery, once uh, as a therapy, but with a reformer or on the floor, like a machine. The yeah, the, like the, the one that you do the pulling and stuff. Uh huh. Yeah, yes. that's that's what I did it with. You should try it. Give it another chance. <laughs> you like it a lot. A lot of athletes do it. Yeah. I'm going to plan a retreat for Edgar. Fishing, <laughs> hunting, Pilates. No, those aren't my type of retreats. <laughs> my type of retreats involve, you know, drinking wine on the uh, on the hills of, of Tuscany, that type of, nice. you know, that's that's okay. more my thing. Uh, so if you're Traveling hunt, is also my hobby. Yeah. 
Okay. I, well, I was a flight attendant, yeah. so there you go. I did a lot of that. But um, and I have family everywhere, so it helps. Where is it that your uh or your family's from? I was born in Argentina, so I okay. still have family in Argentina. But um, my brother and my sister got married and they moved to Spain. So one lives in Madrid, and my brother lives in La Coruña, which is like the Portugal, the border of Portugal. Okay. Should we conduct the rest of this rapid fire in Spanish so that the viewers can get a little bit of, of your Argentinian? Go ahead. <laughs> uh, fine. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Okay. Um, favorite uh, food? Or and you seafood. owned a restaurant, right? Yes. It was okay. a franchise, but oh, okay. it, it's like fast food um, foods. That's not necessarily my favorite. Okay. Um, probably not. You need to have a purpose for profit, right? And I just didn't see my purpose in yeah. that. So, uh, favorite cuisine? I would say seafood. Seafood. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is the first thing you do when you get up in the morning? Okay. Besides looking at your phone. <laughs> I actually don't. You don't. You make it a point not yes, to. Yes, because if I do, then I start my morning flustered, mm -hmm. and I don't like that. First thing I do in the morning is I plan. I I sort of just like talk about my goals right and like what i want to achieve that day like really? in your head you yes just start planning it out oh yeah so i'm like I okay just, i need to start <laughs> taking some notes well there's this so you know tony robbins right mm -hmm. he says every morning you have to go on a walk or do whatever don't take your phone with you and just repeat what you want what, what you're thankful for of what you already have and then what you want don't change it up make it Make it the same five things or whatever, four things that you have. And eventually, you start obtaining all of those goals or desires, right? So I don't always go out for a morning walk, but I, that's what I do. I, I get up in the morning and I'm like, I'm thankful for X, Y, and Z. And I want to achieve X, Y, Z, right? Um, so that's, that's what I do in the morning. So you're there in front of the mirror thankful for do you do like, that in front of the mirror huh? do you do that in front of the mirror do you stretch and <laughs> yeah, you just i mean i could make my coffee and i'm like thankful for that and then i pet my dog and i'm like i'm thankful for that then you just walk around the house and say what you're thankful for gotcha. that's, I do. that's that's really good that's really good and i think more people should do that just to i'm one of the ones that my alarm goes off and i'm like let me see how many messages I have, you know, what emails like, and it, it does set the mood or the tone for the rest of the day. Yeah. Uh, in a way. So um, I started meditating in the mornings like a year ago. I was like, I'm not going to open my email or like, like this social like media. Similar. No, I just like it's yeah. guided. So I just put my, you know, headphones on and just do like a 10 minute meditation. And then yeah. I get up it's, and it, then I it check changes my email. your day <laughs> entirely. And I try to get up really early. Like I don't, I like getting up when like there's still silence out in the street. I'll sit on my balcony sometimes. Is it hard to get up like so early for you? It depends what time I go to bed. Um, but if I go to bed early, I'll get up at five thirty six. And then sometimes I'll go down. <laughs> Are you ever up at that time, or only if you haven't gone to bed yet? <laughs> yeah. You know what I recently started doing is going on on my bike to the levee, like out in the Everglades. It's gorgeous. Really. At five yeah. that time, at five thirty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, because I have to start by nine, so I have to come home, shower, eat breakfast. You're really motivated <laughs> to <laughs> to get the morning started. <laughs> they say that when you get up early, you, your success rate is higher. I disagree, 100%. You do? Because the same thing that you could do at 5.30, I could do at 2.30 in the morning. So. That's fine. No, okay. So the, That's well, fine. The worm is going to get eaten either but, way. Well, they say, but, go ahead. No, no, you said your success is higher, so... I mean, not that you're not successful already, but what about if you started getting up earlier and then you realize it could be higher? That is not a theory that I'm interested in, in testing trying. <laughs> <No>. whatsoever. <laughs> so, you're, you're a night owl. Yeah, I used to be. Now I'm like, I can't hang. I feel yeah. like I'm getting to my 30s and I'm like, oh, this is hitting hard. It's hitting hard. Yeah. I'm going to keep doing that. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you can. All right. And the last one is, oh, no, no. actually, we have two more. Uh, what motivates you? I think that when I achieve goals, it motivates me more. So like every goal that I achieve, I'm like, okay, I thought I couldn't reach it. So this motivates me to go to the next level because there's levels to this. Shit. <laughs> Ish. <laughs> and um, 
one thing on your bucket list? Hmm. Just one. I know. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Um, Take your time. I think. No, I don't think. I know. I would like to bring my family together and like go to Tuscany and like have like a family trip. Because I feel like we're all just so dispersed um, and it's hard to get everyone together. So that's definitely one of my bucket lists. Just have like this long vacation with my entire family. I have the perfect house. When you decide to go, I recommend it to you. It fits. It's like a big house in the hills. Nice. You're going to love it. Or I in the mountains. I don't know if hills or mountains. but Perfect. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Thank uh, Lily, thank you so much for being here. Thank I you really for having me. It's been a pleasure and it's been fun. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm certainly looking forward to working with you guys and seeing our relationship develop. So thank you Likewise. and thanks, Sal. He's not Sal. <laughs> he's not here anymore, but uh, <laughs> yes, definitely. I, I hope will. he. I hope he watches this and knows that we kept him in mind. Absolutely. Thank you right. so much for this opportunity, and as as well, we we look forward to working and assisting your clients. Thank Excellent. You so. Thank you so much. Thank. You. All right, guys. As you guys know, I always say this, and I'm going to keep on saying it. I really, really care to hear what you guys have to say about the information that we're providing here. And uh, it, would, it would make me feel really good if you guys would like and subscribe and uh, just follow us. And we're going to keep doing these and trying to spread as much information as we can about property insurance. Uh, so stay in touch. Take care.